Okay. Um. <clears throat> The morning practice is primarily for making the most of our being here and eventually learn and that in case if you do find that this seven or eight day program is some meaningful for one life for you to become a better person better human being happier person more sensible person somebody who who others feel comfortable to be with um, in which case at the morning practice that we're doing of course the all the good things require a lot of practice and require um, the consistency in what you're doing and um, the purpose is for us to become a better human being more compassionate person so sometimes we focus so much on meditation where the compassion element is missing. Again, we focus so much on what we call as meditation and actually it's just sort of the partial meditation where the cognitive activation is missing, where the compassion element is missing greatly. They talk high philosophy and where they don't know how to feel love and affection towards others. There's no element of affection taught there in some of the, the teachings. So the point is that the, um, it's not just one side. For example, hall, they should believe the ceiling, the floor, the walls, the windows, doors, everything should be there. Likewise, as they, for a meaningful life, all these aspects should be there. Cognitive ones should be so active to know what's going in the future, how, how you can stop the potential dangers in the future for yourself, for others. And for others, with this love and affection, without this love and affection, it's not possible. And then, whatever you do, you must do it with stability for the single point meditation required. So we require all these aspects. So if you do feel, finally, it's up to the individual. And the purpose is not for somebody to become Buddhist or to become, you know, this religion, that religion. The purpose is seek a greater meaning in your life that you are a more compassionate person and that you, you become somebody who becomes an open-minded person uh, to work on the rationality and eventually uh, to see the greatest meaning which is so well reflected in your being where you become more compassionate, you become a more sensible person where anybody feels like to be with you. So if that happens, your purpose is accomplished. For that matter, uh, the, these are the trainings, we require trainings. So what deliberately, um, the, what we're doing here in the mornings is primarily for that purpose, to learn how to practice, to be a more compassionate person. Okay, with this in mind, setting proper mo motivation makes a whole difference. That Tibetan great masters, uh, they talk about the two, the two things important in your practice. One is the initial motivation. Motivation makes, makes a huge difference. At times, what you do is all determined by your motivation. And then the end, dedication. So, as a part of the motivation, um, the letters invoke, we need role models. It's not that we can be so self-sufficient that I can do everything by myself. No, we need examples, good examples. The role models, and till you become more self-sufficient, role models, which means the beings who are very open-minded and who are so embracing with love and affection and who have a tremendous sense of common sense, of wisdom. So let us invoke all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas and whoever you see as the source of the compassion, source of wisdom, invoke them in your mind. <clears throat> And imagine that they are so loving, caring, and embracing to you and all the beings. And what we're going to do here, although we talk about say, fearlessness and infinite happiness, so yes, fearlessness can be created with the wisdom, but the infinite happiness must be with the wisdom accompanied by 
the unconditional compassion. So without this unconditional compassion, it's impossible that we can have this infinite happiness. So with this unconditional the compassion for all the beings, including your two parents, all your family members, including children, and all the human beings, human beings, animals, insects, hungry ghosts, hell beings, God and goddesses, their spirits, all the beings are there. And imagine that you are like the mother, and all of them are like your small children. And if you are not there to help them, then who will be there? And if they don't expect you to help, then who is there, who they can rely on? So with this incredible compassion, just invoke the spirit of incredible compassion towards all the beings. And the purpose of this practice is that you have the seed of perfection within you. You are not perfect, but you have the seed of perfection. Apple seed is not apple. Apple seed is not apple, but you have the apple seed, which can germinate if you are able to uh, create the proper conditions. This has the potential to germinate into the perfection, seed perfection. So don't be deceived by the illusion that I'm, I am already perfectly happy. We have the seed of happiness. We are not happy. We are not. We don't are. We are not perfectly happy. We have the seed of perfect happiness. This seed must be perfectly germinated. If you already have the perfect happiness, you have to come here. <clears throat> so the seed of perfection is with us. That has to be germinated. And why it is not germinated thus far is because that is being blocked by the metal defilements. And the metal defilements there too, the gross and the subtle. The gross one referred to the afflictive obscurations. The presence which stops us from attaining fearlessness, technically referred to as nirvana. And a subtle one, like the smell of garlic, smashing garlic in a mug, and the remove all the garlic, solid garlic, wash it so well, so there's no trace of garlic there, but smell it, it still smells garlic. So that is like the carnage of obscurations. The presence of this blocks us from experiencing infinite happiness. So our job is to remove these two mental defilements. And how to remove these two mental defilements is by resorting to a very powerful remedy. What's the remedy? Given that these mental defilements, the nature of the mental defilements is ignorance, self-grasping ignorance, and a subtle garlic, the smell of the garlic-like mental defilements, kind of obscurations, all really somehow related to the ignorance, self-grasping ignorance. So the kind of force must be the wisdom. For darkness, is only to introduce the light for to, to, to remove this darkness of ignorance and its stains is only to introduce the light to wisdom. So what is that wisdom? So this wisdom is something to be inculcated within us, cultivated within us, and for which we have to gain conviction in this, not just falling blindly, but we need to gain conviction. To gain conviction, we have to study this so extensively. After having studied this, don't take it blindly, it, whatever you have studied must be subjected to, ultimate, to analysis. Only with the analysis, once you're convinced, only then you can take it seriously. Otherwise, you are not to follow blindly. Okay, even though it's coming from Buddha or any enlightened beings, it, they must be subject to analysis. So without the conviction, you can't really get anywhere. It just remains as blind faith. It's just nice talk. There's no meaning there. So there's a purpose, and there's a purpose for yourself and for all the demonstration beings. And your parents are the role model for your compassion in this life. And although you say some of you might have complications with your parents, but we came here to transcend the ordinary people's thinking. And transcend doesn't mean that that the, you will forever, forever remain with limitations and you just bypass this. This is not a connotation. It simply means that you are going to transform somebody who is imperfect being will become perfect. So that's the meaning of the transcendence or transformation. So that being the purpose to invoke this wisdom and this wisdom must be supported by very strong motivation. And for us, the motivation of 
unconditional bodhicitta. And this bodhicitta must be supported by the renunciation, the desire to get away from miseries. Okay, with this motivation, let us turn to page 3 and imagine that you are leading this practice and your two parents, all of family members, including children, and all the Amunashinjan beings, they are joining us. <clears throat> and again, a reminder, as you read these lines, make sure that that's done with, if possible, with three things, if not two. One is where the words flow, number two, where the meanings are reflected. If the meanings are not reflected, there's no point, it's just a waste of time. And then where somebody with the practice of the Dharma well, then the, even the experiences can be invoked. So that will come later. Okay. B3. And through your great compassion, you taught the Makarit Dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, of your homage. And through your great compassion, you taught the Makarit Dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, of your homage. And through your great compassion, you taught the Makarit Dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, of your homage. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations of practice and giving and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations of practice and giving and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sanye Jula Soge Chonam La Chanjo Bardo Tani Kapsu Che Age Jin Soge Bel Sonam Ke Trola Benjere Sanye Jubare Cho Sanye Jula Soge Chonam La Chanjo Bardo Tani Kapsu Che Age Jin Soge Bel Sonam Ke Trola Benjere Sanye Jubare Cho Sanye Jula Zoge Jonam La Chanjo Bardo Tane Yapsuch Tage Jin Zoge Bel Sonam Gate Ola Penjere Sanye Jubare Shom. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no rising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the Supreme among all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is afraid of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas, which through the knowledge of all lead hearers seeking passage to complete peace, which through the knowledge of paths, courses, souls, and members achieve the aims of the world, <coughs> and through the possession of niche which helps subdue its expanded varieties of teachings. The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by autism to benefit sentient beings, the teachers who guard and protect her to you are menstruations. The one is eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who turn a chance for the forever noble life raised to you, the Buddha, make prostrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of and human beings. Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam Hetum te sham datha gato yavatat, te sham chayo niroda, evam vati mahashramana yeswaha. Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam, he tum te sham datha gato yavatat, te sham chayo niroda, evam vati mahashramana yeswaha. Om ye dharma he tu prabhavam, he tum te sham datha gato yavatat, te sham chayo niroda, evam vati mahashramana yeswaha. 
all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata, the cessation causes, as well as taught by the great seer. Profound, peacefully, elaborate, and free, clear light and non composite, such as nectar light Dharma I have discovered. Finding no one who can fathom this teaching, in silence I'll return to the words. Beyond our friend's thought and expression is a professional wisdom, which is unborn, unceased, and has the nature of space. His object of apprehension of self realized wisdom to you, the mother of the Buddhas, for three times, are be abysses. All composite things are impermanent, all contaminated things are nature of suffering. All phenomena are the nature of emptiness and selflessness. Transcend the soul of peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha. The Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for refuge in the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings from miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of eons. The Buddha does not watch the negative videos of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of the suchness that the beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine light of Dharma for all Buddha and Mishri's clone. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Okay, let us turn to page 14, reading the praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. So as you read what is here, um, what is expected is that when you praise the Buddha, then the Buddha will be very praised, will be very pleased, and then will bless you, give blessings. This is not the, the, the reason. It's not the purpose. It's too childish purpose. You praise the Buddha, and the Buddha will be very happy, and then bless you. This is very childish. Whether you praise or not, for the Buddha, there's no difference. If this is who you are, where you are being affected by praise or by def defamation, you are not enlightened. You still have this weakness. This is a weakness. So the Buddha is somebody who is like a mother, a small child. A small child says something nice to the mother. The mother can say, you're okay, you're right, you're healthy. It's not that I'm praised, oh, I'm so happy, thank you. No, this is not the point. For a sensible mother, for a sensible mother, when the, the child praises the mother, thanking the mother, the mother will say, oh, the child is growing now. The growing knows how to express gratitude towards others. So not that, oh, I'm so happy, thank you. No, this is not the, the mother's approach. And particularly when the child is very young, tender, growing, so vulnerable. So, uh, the point is that as you read this, then what's the purpose of reciting this uh, praise to the Buddha Shakyamuni? It is to say, what are the reasons, on the basis of which, what are the qualities, on the basis of which the Buddha Shakyamuni is being praised? And these qualities, remember that these are the qualities the, whose seeds each one of us have. We have this, the, the seeds of all these good qualities. And seeing that these are the qualities with which the Buddha is praised, uh, praised, and uh, see if you have some of these qualities within yourself. Beautiful, partial, whatever. If you do have, rejoice in these qualities and see that I also should become Buddha one day to benefit all the beings. Buddha meaning that I become an awakened being where I can benefit all the beings. So how to, to become that? by activating these qualities with me. What are the qualities? So if you look at these, then you see compassion, quality, all these things are there. Otherwise, say many of the, you say some of the teachings which I met, so whatever, so the compassion element is totally missing. They talk about a very high philosophy. I don't know what kind of philosophy. And that the West compassion element is totally missing. The person can become very cold. So, so the what qualities? So look at these qualities and see if you have some of these qualities. If you do have, rejoice and see how to nurture them further. So these are the qualities, nurturing, perfecting, of which you become, become the full awakened being to benefit all the beings and yourself. And if you don't have, no doubt you have the seeds. Because each one of us, we have the, the seed of perfection. The goal is inside us. So, 
Our job is to identify that these are the seeds that I have. I must awaken these seeds. So try to cultivate these qualities and try best. Of course, it'll take time. It's not about one life. And people who can really awaken this the the potential within yourself within one lifetime, like just Malaripa. Um, so rare. Otherwise, we have to think of in many lives. But this journey is a very interesting journey. Okay, so with this mind, let's recite the following. To the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, completely perfected, full awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugada, Lord of the world, supreme God of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, that subdued from the Shakti clan, a prostrate, and make offerings and go for refuge. When all supreme amongst humans, you are born on this earth. You pace out seven strides, then said, I'm supreme in this world. To you who are wise, then I'm prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain. Fame that this is in the three worlds, win of the best, Lord, to you are prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like a spotless moon, color like gold, to you are prostrate. Just feel free like you, the three worlds are not. Incompatible wise one, to you are prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit without qualities of vast ocean, to you the Tathagata I prostrate, the purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one part, the sublime pure reality, to the Dhamma that pacify I prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, holy feel qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha I prostrate. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly, this is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of lamb, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing. Subdue the four falls and be delivered from some summer, some summer ocean perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness and death. <coughs> Okay, let's turn to page Ahar Sutra, page 29. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, this is a good question. I know, I know. Not only I know, I sympathize mm -hmm. because I'm part of you. I'm not a living, not living speaker. Uh, the this is the issue. Narrating speakers, there is so fast, right? And then the for developers not in the master's course, not in the diploma course, we assign the participants to to lead the to lead the recitations. Whereas the narrating speaker, they read it so fast. Whereas non native speaker, they read it so slow. Right? So fast, nobody can catch it. So slow, everybody feels so bored. Right? What is this reading? Right? So slow, thus did I hear at one time. Right? Then everybody feels so sleepy, bored. Okay, what should I do? They, okay, let's try best. Thank you for bringing this up. Oh, by the way, how many of you are native English speakers? Raise your hand. Meaning, they say the native English speakers, meaning English from America, England, whatever, even from India, some this the the language, the first language is English. Extremely good English. In fact, I would say that some of the Indians, their English is better than the the native the word Britishers. <laughs> yes, of course. Beautiful English. In fact, when I was in Cambridge, uh, the I saw a difference between the say the in Cambridge in England, Cambridge. It's like the university. Of course, there are other people in the town also. But then the whole compound area is influenced by the academic richness. The people, their vocabularies are so rich and central structures are so beautiful. And I thought that this is what is meant by English. Later on, somebody came from a very remote village, English village. And my professor a friend, he brought in and we met. Then I was 
I could see the contrast. Those in Cambridge, the English, the vocabulary is so rich. And the sentence structure is so beautiful. But it is not the case in all, all of England. So what I'm saying is that so people from the other countries, like India or even Singapore and so forth, the English is so good, extremely good, high quality. Vocabulary is beautiful, rich, and the sentence structure is so beautiful. Okay, so those of you who have like the English as your first language, anybody from any country, you raise hands. Okay, those who find it a little difficult to follow our reading, raise hands. Okay, and but when I speak too fast, raise hands. Right? For, for me, it's like I'm new to Buddhism, and my mind is slow, and some people made me more familiar with these texts. But um, when we read fast, it's hard for me to Exactly. I fully agree with you. So, you know, why? So, there are two possibilities. Either we, I slow down, or you become faster. <laughs> <laughs> right? So without practice, you will never go faster. Okay, let's try. In fact, I'm not really fast. To be very honest, I'm not so fast, right? So this reading, because I must have read it 100,000 times. For all the Buddhist retreats, I have to recite this. And the Venerable Tenzin La, there. So in her nunnery, to something recently, just we had the same retreat. Okay, so let's try, let's try. Thank you for your bringing this up. Up. Thank you so much. Okay, let's read this. Let's keep in mind that the for Heart Sutra, um, three points not to miss. One, what is the question asked by Shariputra to Aravalukiteshvara? Number two, what is the response given by Aravalukiteshvara to Shariputra? Number three, what is the benefit if you practice as taught by the Aravalukiteshvara in response to the question asked by Shariputra. Okay, these are the three points that we are not to miss. And as far as possible, say, of course, we can't expect that in these seven days you have to follow everything without the, say, the, everything so rationally. Even to build up this, the part of the rationality will take time. This part of the reasoning, part of the articulating your thoughts, and the power to see where the other person is, you know, following blind faith. You can easily see that. So somebody talks, very sophisticated, but you can see where the person, where the, the blind faith is, where the loophole is, you can see that. So for, or for to, to acquire these skills, you require a lot of training. It's not that, you know, in one week you can build that skill. It'll take a lot of time. Okay. So it's for this reason that in big monastic universities, in Serra, Debung, Gandhan, big monastic universities in South India, all these monk scholars, they debate, debate, debate to see the loopholes in your conversation. So this, with the moment somebody is talking, you can instantly you can see where the person, uh, whether it's really rationally or there's a blind faith somewhere there, loophole, blind faith, they grounded, hidden, right? And many people cannot see that blind faith. So these skills will help you to, to articulate your thoughts and others' thoughts you can see this so clearly. And with this, then it is, it's, not, it's not about refuting somebody. It's not about rejecting somebody. It's rejecting your own ignorance. This is one purpose, right? And we can't fix the whole world. Let's say the Buddha came, Lord Mahavir came, Ram came, J Jesus Christ came, Prophet Muhammad came, Zarastra came, Guru Nanak came, and what? And Baha'u'llah came, and all these great teachers came, but the world is still suffering. So, we can't expect to fix the whole world, but fix ourselves, and then spread this, spread this compassion, spread this happiness towards others, the, the best you can. That's our job. Okay, let's read this. The Heart Sutra, Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. <clears throat> I prostrate to Dalia Chubal Jen. Thus did I hear at one time the Buddha was dwelling on Master Vulture's mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. 
Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravali Yuteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravali Yuteshvara, how should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom train? He said that <coughs> Aravalukiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharitvatiputra, Sharitvatiputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five heavy gates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composing factors, and consciousness empty. Chariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unproduced, unseen, stainless, not without stain, not efficient, not fulfilled. <clears throat> no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on, up to and including no aging in death and no extinction of aging in death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation of path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the professional wisdom, the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, there is the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest the complete awakening, to answer possible, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the professional wisdom. <coughs> Therefore, the mantra of the professional wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, and the surpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the, man the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the professional wisdom is declared. Dhyata Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Bodhisattva. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Buddha arose from their concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadhyutishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound professional wisdom, just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Buddha, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharitvatiputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadhyutishvara, those around in the entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, as well as the Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised as spoken by the Buddha. Deata Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Parasam Gade Bodhiswatyata Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Parasam Gade Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Para 
संगते बोधि स्वा Padre Tishin so three supreme jewels possessed in the power of truth. May in and out of hindrance be transformed. May they be dispelled. May they be non-existent. May they be pacified. May all negative forces opposed to the complete, the, the Dhamma be completely pacified. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dhamma. May all enjoyments be in the economy of the Dhamma. May all species and perfect happiness be very displaced now. Okay, some of you may be wondering why clapping, right? Okay, so basically the idea is that the, um, say, the, um, what is this? Huh? Thump. I know that. Huh? Okay, good, right? Then two thumbs, very good. Ten fingers, extremely good. <laughs> No, it's just a convention. You're getting it? It's just convention. This is where we would learn. Convention. So, and somebody, a child, for the first time says, A for apple. What is this? Huh? Hey, stop. Don't talk. Or, wow, so good. What is this? It's so good. So, the hand is not saying good. Right? It's just a convention. It's just a convention. And Chak will feel that when you do this, Chak will feel, cannot articulate it, but could feel your joy, your appreciation, mental phenomena. <coughs> this mental phenomena, with the joy, with the joy and appreciation, the physical gesture is this. In which anybody does this, the child is happy. Whereas, if you're very unhappy, do like this, and even in future, somebody just like this, the child is very child becomes stiff. You're getting it? It's just a pure convention. Likewise, clapping. It say they say the, the say, say in time, convention can change. In time, conventions can change. So in Tibet, in those days, this clapping is a gesture. It's just a convention to ward off, to dispel the negativities. It's just convention. And in the West, this is nice. For example, when you go to the shrines, to put on the hat is good or to put on the hat is rude. Hey, what's it? What's, what should we do when you go to a shrine? Should you put on the hat or remove the hat? Uh -huh. Depends on which religious shrine. So why is there some some religious gods that are not happy when you with that, or some were very happy when you with that? Uh, it's just a pure convention. People created, not the gods. People created. You're getting it. So where there is a convention created that you should have cover your head. If not, it's so rude, so disrespectful. It's very scary sometimes. Actually, when you go in the shrine, there should be joy. There is God's place. And now in the, at the parents' place, you feel you're suffocated. <laughs> so rude, they with the head. And some places, with the head is so rude. You have to remove the head. You have to say, the, putting on the head, the, these are the indication of your, say, the arrogance. Remove the head. Oh, then I remove the head. Without, again, remove the head, they, again, so stiff that, you know, they, and then another God. God is very happy with you, but the God in charge, hey, you must remove that, right? And you feel so stiff. Okay, there's all the people's creation of conventions. You getting it? So, one can then say, remove a head is good or bad. No, it depends in the place and time. Some places, it is considered very courteous. Some, people, some places, it is very rude, disrespectful. So we have to know the context. This is a convention. Objectively, there's nothing there. Whether you put in the head or not head is fine. Whether you put a one finger, two finger, ten fingers is fine. Right? This, 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 no difference. It's just a convention created. And we're bound by the convention. And then we, are, we suffer. Right? We suffer. If you say this, right? It's a disaster. 
right? Somebody celebrating birthday and said, you should do like this. It's a disaster. People may, you know, arrest you or may lead this good fight happening. So what is this? What is this? Right? All the bad things go down. All the good things go up. Right? It's just a convention. So clapping is a convention in Tibet in those days to, as a gesture, to ward off, ward off the evil forces, the negativities. That's as simple as that. There's nothing hard and fast rule there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now let us read. Um, okay. Uh, Mandal offering, page 40. <clears throat> Mandala offering page 40. So mandala offering. And here the um, say how many of you when you go to meet your you know meet somebody who you consider is very important for you, you go with some gifts, right? Yes, you go with some gifts. Okay, so it's a gesture of your feeling of you know, affection. So when I was in, recently when I was in um, the Finland, I was buying some, you know, pens and, you know, some items. My friend, my friend was a local person there, Finnish. He said, that you can get these from India, you can get these from Delhi. I know, I know, but this presence is not because that people there don't have pen. I'm buying this not because that my friends, they don't have pen, so I bring it from Finland. No, there are so many good pen, pens in Finland, in, in India, in Delhi. But if I buy something locally and I give it to them, they know that this is from Delhi, right? Whereas if I bring it from Finland, that person would feel that, oh, he felt, he thought of me when he was in Finland, right? It's symbolic of your, the person who feel your heart, that he thought of means from that distance. He came all the way from Finland, but he brought something from Delhi, it's very locally, right? I have, why should I, you know? It's not that I don't have a pen, I have so many things. But if you bring something from distance, which means that your feeling, your love, your affection is there, even though you are distance in space. Okay, so these are the, the conventions. This could feel your final, all these conventions somehow to be related to your thinking. Thinking. And the, that the communication of the heart. So sometimes the conventions can become so redundant and still they continue. That becomes ritualistic. So therefore, where the conventions become very redundant, no more use at all, and still practice it, this is purely blind faith and ritualistic. Rituals per se is not bad. Per se, is, nothing's not wrong. For example, I say, as the say, we come here, and then I, the say the, I face you, and you face me. It's also a form of ritual. You know, why don't we sit all surrounded together, close by here, right? So in fact, I feel more, the, so more people are there, and less number of people are there, and my mind is always looking at there. It's not very uncomfortable for me. So why not? We all are together, right? The surrounding, and me not higher, but it's together. That's better. So the point is that there are some the gestures, some gestures which are very helpful for developing our, cultivating our so thought. For example, like say the, okay, say the in the Indian tradition, the folding hands, beautiful gesture. Whereas when somebody folds the hand, when you are angry and fold the hand, then it becomes a very dirty gesture. Whereas when you feel the respect, and then it's expressed in the form of gesture, bound down a little bit, this is beautiful. And what is this? No, I don't approve you. Right? Whereas, if somebody feels a good thing about you, you appreciate, then the person does like this, right? Oh, then whenever somebody does like this, it's so beautiful. It's pure convention. Okay.
So mandal offering. Mandal offering is that the offerings are, as you said, as I said earlier, you're, when you go to visit your friends, you know, you take some the say the gifts for that person. So likewise, it's just a bad it's just of your expression, expression of your feeling for the person. So likewise, mandal offering, we offer everything good that exists in this universe to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to indicate that I appreciate your good qualities. I want to learn from you. I want to be connected with you. This is how you are connecting. It's not that you come with the gifts, then the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will be very happy and then we'll give you a special treatment. That's not the idea. The idea is that you should be connected with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So as just of that, we make the offerings and after making the offerings, then we uh, say the, make the request to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and the two sets of requests are included here. Okay, and the gesture is the, the offering the universe in the olden times, the cosmology. And the uh, cosmology as the as understood in the olden times is Mount Miru at the center with the four continents on the side, with the, the eight subcontinents, with two each for the two for each of the, the four major continents and sun and moon. So this is just the, the symbolic of the universe. A part of the universe though. Then we offer the whole universe to Buddhist Bodhisattvas, indicating that I be indicating that from my side I'm ready to give everything to learn from you, to learn compassion, to learn the wisdom from you. Okay. And hand gesture, so you have the actual mandala set. Mandala set represent the whole universe. And otherwise, hand gesture, and oh, I'm sure the many of you don't know how to do this hand gesture, it doesn't matter. You do it, you don't do it, it doesn't matter. If you want to learn it, uh, during the break time, you learn it from somebody else, Venerable is here, and then the many people there, Pinsola is here, with the, and Dogala is there, and Tenzin. Tenzin is there, and there the are many, of, and even, yeah, okay. Joshua, you know, yeah, Joshua. So there are many of you. Okay, it's just, it is not necessary. If you do it one God, if you don't do it, it's fine, right? Your enlightenment is to attain, it's not with the fingers, it's with your birth, the, the mind. Yeah. Okay, I'll say this first in English. We'll say this first in English, followed by the Tibetan. And the Tibetan, you um, just try to listen to me and journey. <clears throat> This ground, anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this is a Buddha field and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. O Four Dharmas of Venerable Gambhava. May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the Dharma. May I be blessed that my Dharma practices on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is free to flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. Uh, four Dharmas of Venerable Bhikshu Mahasattva. Becoming utterly frustrated with the ignorance that grasps the true existence, please bless me to generate genuine renunciation, seeing all aspects of samsara as viciously repulsive. Please bless me that my mind overflows with the precious bodhicitta that cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of emptiness that does not see even an atom of intrinsic reality on the basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. Please bless me that my mind from all flows with the precious wisdom of the non duality of bliss and emptiness.
Okay, the next, the foundation of all good qualities, which we read yesterday. The next page, page 42. <clears throat> uh, this, is the, the, this is the roadmap, roadmap to, to awaken your Buddha nature. A roadmap, what you should be doing. Because this is, say, the, it requires very systematic approach. And this is all taught this in 14 verses. <clears throat> The foundation of all good qualities by Lama Tsongkhapa. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and the perfect pure Guru. Correct devotion to him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me rely upon him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me regenerate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of virtuous and non-virtuous karma follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Samsaric splendors are unsatisfying and unreliable. <clears throat> His shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this pure thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great question arise. The root of the teaching is keeping the breath of Moksha vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so for all mother migratory beings, please bless me to stay there as twin and supreme bodhicitta and bear the responsibility of free migratory beings. Even if I develop bodhicitta, but I don't practice the three types of morality, I'll nourish with enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I pacify distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate quickly within my mind stream the unified part of karma body and special inside. Having become a pure vessel by training the general path, Please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme vajra of ego. At that time, the basis of accomplishing two attainments is keeping pure vows in Samaya. As I become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pleasures throughout my life. Then having realized the importance of the two stages, essence vajrayana, by practicing with great energy. <coughs> Please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Gurus who show the Noble Path and the spiritual friends who practice it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely all out in any hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect Gurus, may enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the qualities of stages and the paths, may create attendance to the Vajratara. Okay, we will recite the next one, Maximum Mantra. Um, this, I'll give you the background of this mantra. So this mantra is the identifying the qualities of Lama Tsongkhapa here, Lama Tsongkhapa, 14th century great event master, enlightened master. And when he was, of course, when he was young, then he composed this actually not for himself, for his teacher, where he equated his teacher our teacher with the three perfect qualities of the enlightened being. Perfect love, perfect knowledge, and the perfect power. Let me repeat it. Perfect love, perfect knowledge, and the perfect power. Perfect love embodied by um, Aravrakateshvara, the Bodhisattva of compassion, and also referred to as the Buddha of compassion. And then Arimanjushri to his and the okay the, to his the, to his right Arimanjushri that is the so you can see this one that the mural, mural here yeah here and to the extreme top extreme uh, right side here this side okay gentlemen there your name Camilo thank you Camilo. Thank you so much. Come to know the, the, the convention. Not like this, like this. What's the difference? This and this, there's no difference. But if you do like this, it's very rude. So this rest of And then he knows the convention, so he did like this. He changed it, instantly be mindful, right? So this convention. So this one. Thank you, Camino. Thank you so much. Okay, let's first go for this one. 
Let's not be confused. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now you can sit. Thank you. Okay, so there and to here you cannot see. Okay, so there um, the, the white one is the Buddha of compassion or the Bodhisattva of compassion. And Aravlutishvara. Then to his right, or from our side left, that is Aravanjushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom. Then to his right, no, to his left, and our right, the blue one, that is the Bodhisattva of power. So when you become enlightened, you can you can be why these three qualities? What are the three qualities? Perfect love, perfect knowledge, and perfect power. So why these three qualities? Is that with these three qualities you can most effectively benefit others. And of course, we're going to discuss more on this. The when completing the part in the bodhicitta. So, and then so the Lama Tsongkhapa, he himself he composed this by equating his teacher, Venerable uh, the Renda Oshinanduta with these three beings, with three th the professional three qualities. And Jesu Rindava, his teacher, read it and he erased his own name. And he replaced his name with his student's name, saying that this, me this metaphor of the three perfect qualities um, resonates more with you rather than with me. And then this the this man the mantra became very popular all over Tibet and then used to be recited all over Tibet. So we'll we'll say this first in English, followed by in Tibetan. When we read it in Tibetan, we will we chant it. When we chant it, just to suit the what do you call it, the the, the what the rhyme, huh? the rhythm, the rhyme. We we just skip the third line. And it will not just to to accommodate this rhyme, or well, well, not really rhyme. What do you call it? Melody. Huh? Melody. 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 Okay, I'm not sure. So this way, the the is a clear indication that I'm not a native speaker. Yeah. So all these technical words I miss. So just to, to accommodate the melody or the rhyme or the the whatever. The, the third line is skipped. It's not for any other purpose, mm -hmm. uh, but the meaning is intact there. So, with this mind, we'll say this first in English. You are Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of non-referential compassion, a Majushri, master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, to destroy hosts of demons without exception. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the sages, land of snows, lost from Tarpa, at your feet I make prostration. So, often the very uh, fondly, people refer to this great enlightened teacher as Lama Tsongkhapa. Lama Tsongkhapa. Um, but his na real name is Abde Lopsang Tapa. Okay. So now we'll say this in Tibetan. Um, those of us who, who know how to sing this, sing with me. And others listen to us and join us. <clears throat> Oh, 
Kaaba Dozatade Chabla Sobade You are a Valutishvara, great treasure of non-referential compassion, a Majushri, master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, destroy of hosts of demons without exception, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the sages, land of snows, lost on top by your feet, I make prostrations. Okay, the main practice, so thus far, is like laying the ground for a practice, and the main practice is generating the mind of consummate yoga, which is on the next page. Um, the, this consists of the four points. One is a single point of meditation. A single point of meditation. Number two is renunciation. Renunciation. Number three is bodhicitta. And number four is wisdom of emptiness. So since that, we are, to, we are yet to introduce to the wisdom of emptiness. We are not introduced to bodhicitta. So we're not going to do this, do this today. Uh, we'll do the single point of meditation, which we did yesterday. And alongside, we will do uh, the, in lieu of the bodhisattva, we will do the four measurables. And if we'll get a little time, we will make the bodhisattva commitment, and then we will stop there. Okay. Yes. Okay, so basically, uh, this is a good question. Aravalukiteshvara, the Buddha of the Buddha of compassion, or the Bodhisattva of compassion, and uh, the Aravindushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom, Aravajapani, the Bodhisattva of power, and then you see so many directions there. And so what we have here is not too much. It's still so less. And then some, so many of them, so many. But you don't really worry. The most, the most important thing is that we have to learn what are the, the mental qualities to be cultivated. And these are all the representations of the mental qualities. So, out of Lugiteshvara, out of Manjushri, out of Vajrapani, and these three are, say, the symbolic of the three perfect qualities of when you become a Buddha. Each one of us, when you become Buddha, your your wisdom will manifest in the form of Aramanjushri. And your compassion will manifest. The perfected state is manifested in the form of Aramanjushri. And your the potential, the power to benefit the beings, that when that becomes perfected, it manifests in the form of Aramanjushri. And this is not popular. So the Buddhism at large, we see that and today we see that it's of two kinds. One is the Pali based, Pali language based Buddhism, and the other one is the Sanskrit language based Buddhism. And Pali language based Buddhism today popularly known as the Theravada. Theravada Buddhism, it was in the say like first century BC, second century BC, that King Ashoka. Uh, from India, he sent his son and uh, daughter, two of them, to Sri Lanka to, uh, to spread this teaching of the Buddha. And it becomes so widespread in Sri Lanka, then to Cambodia, Burma, Thailand. So that part of Buddhism um, is known as the Theravada Buddhism. And if you go there, you'll see that the language, the primary language, uh, the on basis of which 
the, that teaching is being disseminated, that language is Pali language. And whereas the um, Buddhism in 2nd century AD, not BC, 2nd century AD, and the, then the 3rd uh, century AD, and in Tibet, 7th century AD, particularly 8th century AD, from Nalanda, uh, Buddhism went to the China in 2nd century AD, 2nd century AD, and went to Tibet in 8th century AD. So these two the, the Buddhism which spread from Nalanda in these two places, from China to Japan, Korea, Vietnam and so forth, from Tibet to uh, to Mongolia, then all the places along the Himalayan belt. So these two are, the root is the same. That is and the, the, the language, the, the Buddhism based on Sanskrit language. So also referred to as the Mahayana Buddhism. And so these figures, like the perfect qualities of Buddhas, in the form of the three deities and so forth, they are popular in the Tibet, in the uh, the Mahayana Buddhism, in the Sanskrit language Buddhism, not in the Pali Buddhism. But there's no contradiction there. The only thing is that these are all the represent. If you know that these are all the representations of your mental qualities, then it's just fine. But if you just see them as external depiction there, and then oh, you don't have the Aravalukti, so we have Aravalukti. If this is your attitude, you have not understood the Sanskrit Buddhism. So there's all to be seen as mental qualities, representation of the mental qualities. Yes. So going back to parts of the land, I know both Jerry took us at the Bodhisattva of Aloki Vishwara, so I might assume that he's actually speaking to his higher self. Okay. Okay, this is a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there are many nuances there, and uh, the, uh, I'll be happy to share with you these nuances. And I should also be careful that there are many new people who may get confused. What is this? Right? Okay, so what is Aravalu Tishvara? Was there a being by the name, by the label, by the, the title, by the label, by the name, by the label, Aravalukiteshvara at the time of the Buddha? Answer is yes. Answer is yes. And they say, uh, yes, there is a, a figure there, a person there, who, the Aravalukiteshvara, referred to as Aravalukiteshvara, and actually embodiment, the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion. Yes, he was there. So all these conversations were happening there. And then they say, for example, let's say the um, okay. Um, let's say that on the um, when you decorate the house for the small children, you have to decorate the house with teddy bear and so forth. So they'll be very happy. With the elder people, with the teddy bear, balloon, even now it is yes, balloon is up there also for the Decorating birthday, celebrating birthday of the even elders, right? Like my age, still they put their balloon and so forth. <laughs> Asking for the small children and teddy bear. Okay, for the small children, this is the meaning of the decoration. Teddy bears there, they're very happy, and chocolates are there, very happy. So, then as you become older, then don't keep hanging on the teddy bear, right? So when you age three, four, five, hold the teddy bear is fine. Then A for apple, B for ball is fine. When you reach class ten, age sixteen, seventeen, still A for apple. Don't say this, right? So there's a transition happening. So likewise, so it is many connotation. One is where there's a physical, the appearance there as a figure. This one thing where the common people can understand it. Another thing is that they say, when you become a Buddha, you can manifest in millions and trillions of emanations. You can manifest yourself in trillions of emanations. In fact, there was something common in many traditions, not only Buddhism, even in the classical Indian traditions, such as Mamamsaka, Samkhya, Vedanta, Vaisheshik, Nyaya, all these traditions. So they're, they're great teachers who have the power, medical, medical power to manifest themselves in different forms. In fact, that, because they, you brought this up, and they, at the time of the Buddha, there was, okay, the, it's also good, 
let's not make it every teaching, teaching, teaching. Some stories also. Uh, at one point, there were, you know, two brothers. One brother, his name is Highway. Baka Road in Hindi. Highway. And the younger brother's name is Kacha Road, which means local road. You know why these two names are given to these two small boys? Because in those days in India, when the, a child is born, the parents would make sure that the child is being blessed by the great saints. So what they do is that, that in those days, we cannot make appointments. We don't have to make appointments with the gurus, right? So instead, you just go there directly. And then the one way is that you uh, we want as many blessings. So the first child was very lucky. The parents were so excited with the new child. So they took the child to the highway. So there are as many saints, they come, and they request for blessings. And the younger one, the parents were already you know, fed up with the first child, right? Get used to the first child, the excitement disappeared. So they were a little lazy, they took to local road. Local road, and his name is Local Road. And the elder one is Highway. So both of them later on, they became the, they become monks to follow the Buddha, the Buddha. they become monks. And the elder one is, was, was it because of the so many blessings received when his childhood, or whatever is the reason, he became extremely excellent in studies and practice. And he became arhat, arhat meaning somebody who already got rid of this self grasping ignorance. The fearlessness is attained, <clears throat> the elder brother. So because of this, he was assigned the responsibility to take care of many of the monks. <clears throat> and the younger one was so dull, so dull. Say, for example, I say, if he was to assign to remember and choose by great compassion, you taught the Mekhuri Dharma, right? So by the time you, he was memorizing, you taught the great Dharma, you, he forgot the first line. And this great compassion just disappeared. And it was the first one he forgot. I mean, with the first one, the second one is gone. So this was how dumb the second one, second child was. <clears throat> so given that the, the, the elder brother, he was assigned with a huge responsibility to take up the whole monastery. So one time, on the one time, a lay devotee invited on this the highway, venerable highway and the older monks for a meal hosted uh, to host it uh, the, with meals. And the elder brother informed all the monks he did not inform the, his younger brother. Because the elder one, he was always feeling like the younger one is like a nuisance, so dull, right? He just, he did not really qualify his younger one as a part of the monastery. And all the monks joined the elder one for the meal and they the buddha appeared buddha appeared in front of the younger one just and asked the younger one where are all the monks and the young one said they all went for the meal well, why don't you go there and my brother did not ask me to come right and the buddha said don't worry you do one thing so buddha asked him how to just ask him just sweep the temple sweep the monastery when you sweep the monastery, um, the person. Okay, when you sweep the monastery, you recite these lines. The first, uh, what's that? Om du bang timapang. Om du bang timapang means I will abandon the dust and I will abandon the mental stain. And the dust that I'm the removing is not the external dust, it's the dust of my afflictions. This is what the Buddha taught. And he was the sweeping the monastery, the um, remove the dust and remove the mental defilements. The dust that I'm sweeping is not external dust, it's the dust of my mental afflictions. He continues to say this and the sweeping, sweeping. As he swept this, the other side, when you see the other side, there's again, there's a motors here. It's all because of the miracle performed by the Buddha. 
And in the process, of course, meet with that many other factors intact, emptiness, visual emptiness, and intact. That his battle with the farmers are all gone. And then the Buddha appeared in the at the host place, at the host place. And the Buddha asked the highway, the venerable highway, the venerable highway, all the monks are here? And the venerable highway said, Yes, sir. Are you sure? Are you sure? And he, then he said, My younger brother is still in the monastery. Call him. The Buddha told him, Call him. And then the, the venerable, the highway, he asked the, the, the son of the family, to go to the, to the monastery and call him. is nearby. And this child went there to the monastery and in the monastery he saw thousand monks there, not just one, thousand monks. He came back and said that it's not just one monk, there are thousand monks. And the highway was, when the highway was confused. No, there can't be a thousand. Okay, maybe now he has become, he has attained aratship. My younger brother must have attained that spiritual realization and now he has met, they emanated these thousand months. Then he said, told the young boy, go back and tell, ask who is the venerable, uh, venerable local road. Then whosoever said, I'm the one, you then get hold of him and bring him here. Then he went there, who is the venerable local road? All the monks said, yes, I'm the one. Right. Then he came back back and said, everybody is saying that I'm the, the local road. Right? Okay. So the highway told the young boy, go and be extremely discreet and extremely sharp, vigilant, to see of these 1,000 monks, see who utters first. Who says first? Whosoever says the first, that I, right, then others follow. I, right, whosoever says first, get hold of him. Then he went there and asked, who is venerable, the, the, the local road? And one monk said, one second, a little earlier, and he got hold of them, all the other monks dissolved into him. Then invited to him to the, 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 to the, the meal. Okay, so what I'm saying is about the emanations. You manifest yourself. So when you become, which each when you, each one of you, when your the seed of perfection within you is manifested fully, there you can manifest yourself in numerable forms. So your compassion, quality of compassion, can manifest in the form of Aravalokiteshvara. Compassion, and wisdom will manifest in the form of Aramanjushri, and the the, the word, uh, the the power, the potential of the power, manifests in the form of. Arvajapani. And the, the, the quality of your quality of the swiftness, efficiency, can manifest in the form of Aritara. Where is Aritara? Where? Is she somewhere? You know, the female goddess? Yes, the where? Okay, in the statues there? Where? Okay, I can see. Okay, it's fine. So, uh, so all these deities, they are the represent the, the they are the manifestations of the qualities of the individuals when you become perfect. So, in the in the eyes of ordinary people, for example, like in Vulture Speak, what we read in Heart Sutra, that Shariputra asked a question to Aravalokiteshvara. So, what is that Aravalokiteshvara? What is that? The really something different from Buddha Shakyamuni or the emergent Buddha Shakyamuni, if you ask me, right, we cannot say for sure. So deliver for us, the the manifestations can come out as well like he's a different mind stream from the Buddha. Yeah. Are you good? These are nuances. Okay, I'll meditation now. Are you good? So now five minutes meditation. <clears throat> Five minutes meditation. This is the single point of meditation. Otherwise, there's also the analytical meditation in order to sharpen your intelligence and bring about the, the transformation in your cognitive process from the ignorance to the wisdom, from the selfishness to the, uh, the compassion. 
Okay, ready? <clears throat> and um, the focal point two, focal point two, and okay, for the, uh, oh, by the way, what are the four points? Forgot? Yes, Duala. The first number one is posture. Number two, focal point. Number three is identifying identify the errors of meditation. Number four, applying the remedies to overcome the errors. Let's not forget these four points. You're getting it? Okay, but number one, body posture. Number two, focal point. Number three, identifying the errors of meditation. Number four, applying the remedies to overcome the errors. For the body posture, two most important things. One is body upright. If you have backache problem, then you're exempted. You can lean against the support, it's fine. But if you don't have backache problem, don't just sit upright. And say the when you do meditation, and sometimes when you have meditation for for long periods of time, that do consistently, they say the consistently for weeks, months, and so forth, then there is a tendency that you can have backache you will start to have backache, back pain. If that happens, then there are some exercises. Okay, you want to do the exercise? We have to learn this exercise. Where, say for example, do the, the COVID, people just sitting, 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 it's sedentary. So there then we start to have the physical pain, right? There's one lady who sent me an email saying that, Oh now, Gishila, the whole world is so gloomy, so hopeless. I'm going to I'm feeling so distressed. Then I said that I have a back pain. Then I said the world is not gloomy. Your back pain is making the world seem gloomy. So I taught her how to do the exercise. Then after two days, she said, "Now the world is better." <laughs> yeah, because the pain is gone. <laughs> the pain is everything is gloomy. Okay, so before we before we do this exercise, I also also like to uh, teach this little bit of say the the uh, the breathing exercise as a part of this uh, preliminary to this practice. Okay, what we do is that. Um, <clears throat> Okay, what we do is, so first just stretch your hands out and then oh, the two thumbs inside, wrap them with your other fingers, put them upside down and the two hands straight, straight and put in your feet, on your knees, good, knees and uh, okay, just don't do it now, just listen to me and see me see what I'm doing. Then the, your two fists slowly bend your two hands and then pull the, uh, the pull the uh, your two hands through your legs, through knees, legs, ribs and by the time it reaches your the level of the armpit you let it, you throw it in front not too forcefully. Okay then the two fists, the two hands go to the, the left side like this. And the, the right fist under your arm are the armpit of the left. Okay, let's do it again like this. Good. And then the, your left left hand, let release the, the first finger, the forefinger. Good. Then the hind side of the forefinger, block your right nostril. With the hind side of the forefinger, blow your right nostril and take a deep breath. And then as you breathe out, as you breathe out, let your hand go down to your left knee. Then breathe out. And breathe out through your nose or through your mouth, whichever is fine. Again, bring it up. Left hand with the hind side, hind side, not the, the front side. Hind side, block the right nostril. Again, breathe. Breathe out. Keep, it, keep the hand on your knee. Third time. Third time. Good. So now the next set. 
Again, you have to face on your knees, pull through your legs, through your ribs, and throw it in front. Don't throw it too forcefully. Don't throw it too forcefully. If you do it forcefully, then in three days' time, you'll have muscle ache, muscle pain. Okay, then towards the right, right side, uh, the left fist under your the right armpit. Good. Do it again. Good. Then with the hind side of the uh, the forefinger of the right hand, block the left nostril. Take three deep breaths. Good. Again, pull, throw, and then keep it on your keep the two fists on your knees. Breathe through both nostrils three times. Okay, this is going to be your preliminary breathing breathing exercise before the meditation. Now, for to relieve your pain, back pain, when you do, do a, a they say, long duration uh, session or consistent, I say the many days, months, years sessions of meditation, then you start to have the body, the backache. Back pain. So to remove the pain, what you do is that they say you hold your two hold your two knees with your hand tightly, and if possible, sit cross-legged. If possible, sit cross-legged. <clears throat> okay, hold your two knees with your two hands, and then first bend your body towards the left side. And your the left arm bend it. Right arm should be straight. Left arm bend like this, bend like this, and then your your the shoulder, right shoulder should be should come out. Should come out, and try your best to to see if your right shoulder can touch your left knee. If not touch, you don't have to just move it towards the left knee as much as possible and you should feel the that the back you can feel the back is being stretched that you are stretching your back okay three times one up two three do you feel that your back is being stretched good okay now the same thing um now Bring your left shoulder out and bring closer to your right knee. Three times. One, two, three. Good. You can see that your back is being stretched and you can feel it very relieving. And also even the waist, you can see that is being stretched. This is very uh, healing for you. And you do this exercise, back issue will be gone. And the younger ones, younger ones meaning those in 20s, most likely you can actually touch. How many can touch it? Younger ones? Huh? Yeah, you, younger ones you can touch. Your body is very flexible. Right? Okay, let's try again. Oh, yes, over there you can touch. Good. Okay, let's do it again. The left three times, right three times. Okay. And you can do it more. It's not just only three, three. Okay, let's three, uh, do it. Ready? One, two, three, one, two, three. Good. When you do that, say when you move towards the left side, your right hand should be straight. If you want to feel the benefit, Right hand should be straight like this. Don't make it like this. Don't make it like this. Make it straight like this. 
and the shoulder should be out. Okay, do it. Let me see. Okay, let's do it again. Do it again. Well, left first. Okay, left first so that I can see you. Okay, let's begin. Left. One, two, three. Good. Now the right. One, two, three. Are you good? Are you good? So this way, if you could, if you feel that the back is being stretched and the waist also stretched, uh, that's a good sign that is working. Okay, good. So now, for the the meditation, uh, the for the body posture, the mo two most important things. One is the back should be upright, while not while being flexible, not rigid. The back upright. <clears throat> then the, the other point, <clears throat> which is extremely important, is that your eyes should not be closed. Eyes should be half open. Eyes should not be closed. And uh, the later on, when you become expert in meditation or when you become good in meditation, uh, say the familiar with the meditation, then there are times where you can uh, do your meditation with the eyes closed also. Even when you fall asleep, when you go to sleep, you keep your eyes closed and do a meditation. That's possible. Okay, uh, these two things, back upright and the eyes not closed. These are two things. Then for the focal point, say the, the counting the breath, breathe in, breathe out, cycle one, breathe in, breathe out, cycle two. This is what we're going to do for five minutes. <clears throat> As you do that, um, the, so depending on, depending on the, the length of your breath, for some it can be like 60 cycles in five minutes. For others, it can be like 70, 80. Still others can be even 100. Don't worry too much. Uh, the, so generally, it's been 60 and 100, the, the cycles in five minutes. And then if you like to, then multitasking. Count the breath simultaneously, focusing on a tiny white dot in your nose and upper lip. Two things happening together. Okay, this is a full point. And then number three is so important to make sure that your meditation is very effective. And oftentimes, people think that that the after you do meditation, they start doing meditation just like beginning. Start with the half an hour, one hour. This is not a wise approach. So in the beginning, advice given is that don't do it for long duration it should be short sessions short sessions more number of sessions you could do like three sessions six sessions ten sessions but every time keep it like i say the 21 cycles but here in group is much better in group tendency for you to fall asleep tendency for you to get scattered is much less because you are aware that other people are somehow and you know, they must be aware of me they must be watching me Whereas when you're by yourself, then you can do so, and you feel so nice, pleasant. Nobody's watching you. So because of this, it's just. It, but when you're by yourself, it's advised that you do the meditation with the shorter duration, more number of sessions. Okay. So click the in group. We can do like five minutes is fine. Otherwise, what we suggest is just like twenty-one cycles. Twenty-one cycles is little over one minute, and do it like three times in the morning three times in the evening, and if you are so happy and uh, so nice to do it, um, don't be too too ambitious, don't be too excited, right? Just do it like three times in the morning, three times in the evening, and be consistent. Consistency is more important than doing it so rigorously for a few days. Be very consistent. And the over time, when you see that, the mental laxity and excitement, when these two problems are distance or when these two problems become remote from your mind in other words when you're able to get away from these two problems then you can extend to five minutes then as duration is longer the tendency for these two problems to invade you is more and if you if you succeed with five minutes then extend to 10 minutes focus on the quality in the for the meditation don't focus on the quantity initially okay 
quality and consistency. Okay, so mental scattering, we refer to as the mental excitement, and mental sloppiness or the mental uh, the laxity. So these two things happen. Make sure that you go for number four. What is number four? Applying the remedies to overcome the errors. So the remedies they are twofold: introspection and mindfulness. Okay, uh, the, these two must be applied. Always make the point that that you keep watch of your own mind, that to see if your mind fall falls prey to the excitements, overactivity of the mind, or inactivity of the mind, which is mad laxity. You ready? Five minutes. <clears throat>
Okay. Um, for Bodhisattva part, uh, the uh, ideal speaking for the renunciation, we do the four seals. Okay. So due to constraints of time, we will do the we'll jump to the Bodhisattva part, for which at that too we will do the the first two of the four mesh balls. The first two of the four mesh balls. Are the four mesh balls? Are they mesh ball loving kindness? Immeasurable compassion, immeasurable joy, and immeasurable equanimity. The four, and we'll do the only the first two: immeasurable loving kind, the immeasurable compassion first, and loving kindness. And these two can, in the order, may not be fixed. Some people do the loving kindness first, followed by compassion. And um, the when we do only these two, I prefer to do the compassion first, followed by loving kindness. When we do the four. Then we do the traditional way. Love God is first, compassion, joy, equanimity. Okay, ready? <clears throat> um, for this, uh, this is going to be analytical meditation. Analytical, where your mind is going to be actively thinking. And uh, the so it's going to be guided meditation. You just follow the instructions to the best you can. And while do this in the form of an analytical meditation, don't try to compare and contrast. You can compare and contrast later on, not now. So here, just focus on invoking the experience to the best you can. And this is what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> and at times, the, this can be, this practice can be very superficial because our mindset, how we think, and the mindset as being guided, these two can be, be strikingly different. We are very selfish in nature, generally speaking. But as in this instruction, you say that I will take the responsibility to, to remove all the sufferings of the, the beings. And no, this is not my mind, this is not my thinking. You know? So this is the meaning of practice. We're trying to undo our, say, the bad habit of thinking only about the self. And by thinking of the self, it gives you the maximum happiness. Go for it. That's what's wrong with it. But on the contrary, instead of giving you happiness, it attracts all the miseries. Now we are trying to revolutionize our thinking where your happiness actually grows with a different set of thinking. So this is what we're going to try to learn. And they, for example, say when you practice music, by the way, how many of you learn to play the keyboard? One, two. Yes, there are several of you. So, when you first learn this, there's no music coming out. Just mimicking your teacher. This is not how you naturally do. And how you naturally do, there's no music. You mimic the teacher, and eventually, then music comes out through practice. This means the practice. You ready? First, immeasurable <coughs> compassion. And just let your mind flow according to instructions. Reinforce, reinforce the visualization of all the enlightened beings who embody incredible compassion towards all the demon sentient beings. And also re reinforce the visualization of your two grandparents and all your family members, your children, and all demon sentient beings living on the side. How good would it be that all my dear mother sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of the suffering? May all my dear mother sentient beings be freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddha's Buddha says this, witnessing that you are making such a courageous commitment, you are intensely happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke the compassion of nation minds to send for nectar and very sweeping lights to us, you and all demons and human beings. The mere touch of less than nectar with the body speaks yours, washes over all the miseries and causes causes of miseries. The cause of misery, misery is primarily consisting of self grasping ignorance and self centered attitude. 
and you witnessing such a miracle is happening to us all the diverse human beings, you're intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sigh with relief. Next imaginable <clears throat> loving kindness. How good would it be that all my dear ascension beings are endowed with happiness and a causeless happiness? Causeless happiness, primarily consisting of the wisdom of emptiness to see everything like a dream, and bodhicitta, the unconditional love to take the responsibility to become Buddha to involve dear ascension beings. May all my dear mother sentient beings be endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. <clears throat> I will take the responsibility that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. The Buddhist Bodhisattvas, like the mother, after, after all these many years of bearing the hardship of raising her children, today, eldest daughter, just age 12, and the eldest son just age 11, two of them come to the mother, telling the mother, Mother, you have done everything for us. Please take rest. We are near to take care of you. We are there to, oh, we'll take care of all the siblings. And the mother could not believe her eyes and ears, tears running down my cheeks. This is exactly what is happening to all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Seeing that you're making such a courageous commitment to take the responsibility of all the human beings, and so intensely happy and proud of you, this brand happens to invoke their compassionate omniscience to send for nectars and receive the lights to assume all the human sentient beings. The mere touch of lights and nectars with the body of beings yours instills in all happiness and the cause of happiness in the minds of the human sentient beings yourself. And you've been listening to such miraculous happenings to us all, all the dimension beings. You're intensely happy. Take two, three deep breaths, sound the relief. <sighs> Underscore all the four measurables is the unconditional love to us all dear sentient beings. Just about in the experience of the unconditional love to us all the beings, and imagining that you are looking at the eyes of each of the sentient beings with so much love and affection, to the extent that each one of them feels themselves so special in the eyes. Okay, with folded hands, we'll make a Buddhist commitment, and I'll say this. Land of Bodhicitta, and let us all say these three times together. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. This is the most beautiful mind of the Bodhicitta. This most beautiful mind, most appealing mind that possibly exists in this whole universe. And today you've generated this mind. So precious. So this mind slowly transformed into this, and slowly transformed this mind into a spotless clean white bone disc, two inches in diameter, one and a half inches, inches in diameter, or two inches in diameter, horizontally, sitting with the heart. Okay, good. Now we will end with the Darshan prayer. Now page 52. <clears throat> I dedicate the merit thus gathered towards the realization of the deeds in the prayers of the Buddhists and the Bodhisattvas for three times, and to the upholding of the doctrine of the scripture and insight. May in all lives, through the force of this merit, 
never separate from the four wheels of the Mahayana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, bhavdhubha in the two stages. From my two collections, vast space that I've amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom is blinded by ignorance. Deyata om gate gate para gate para sam gate bodhi swahatyata om gate gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswahatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswahatyata 